Welcome everybody to the Alternative Sports Show, powered by Barge Magazine. I'm Matthew Connell, and we are running ever so close to the road to WrestleMania, which can only mean the Royal Rumble is around the corner. So to get us all us Brits excited about it, we've got the 24-7 champion, Dana Brooke, in the house, representing right there. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Now, of course, it has been a great... Well, the last couple of months for you has been incredible to watch as 24-7 champion. It's been thoroughly entertaining to see as well with yourself, Reggie, side by side. But we've got to look forward to the Royal Rumble. We're so excited about it. It's one of my favorite events of the year. Last year, you were part of it, entered number um, number 16, I believe. And it was the it was the kind of the Superdome, the Thunderdome era. Didn't have fans exactly. there. This time round, back in front of the WWE Universe, how exciting is this? This is beyond exciting. I am super, super excited for this event. Um, I've been a part of every single Royal Rumble for the women since we've had it. I believe it's been four. And every single year is like, it's so refreshing to come into a Royal Rumble. You never know what legends are coming, who's going to be there, who's going to pop out what the excitement is going to be. You know, we've had Mandy roll out of the ring, land on Otis. We've had Hornswoggle, you know, chase Selena around. It's super, super exciting. And one of the years, you know, I had um, Casey from NXT and she did, you know, the she didn't put her feet on the ground. She put her feet yeah. on the um, barricades and was walking around. It just brings out every single woman's talents and abilities. And we're all in there for, you know, one purpose, and that is to win. Um, but it's, it's just to be with the generation of women at this time is amazing. Cause it is, we're setting the bar. We're, we're rising to the top and we're showing that we can do anything that the men, we can do everything that the men are doing. And, um, like I said, it's been amazing to do it four years in a row. Last year was definitely difficult. As you had mentioned with the pandemic, um, it was hard, you know, like we feed off of the fans and especially Royal Rumble, you know, you hear the crowd counting down five, four, three, two, one, and you go out there and that crowd erupts. It is, it's a magical feeling and you go out there, it feels like it's your first time going out there, but it is so, you just, it's like a, a surge of energy through your body. And last year it was, it was just that because I had a different mentality of, I, I know I'm doing something for millions of people on the other side of the screen on the TV where, you know, they don't have an outlet and this is their outlet to watch the Royal Rumble. So I kind of tuned into that inside where I was like, Hey, I'm doing this for everybody at home, but coming into 2022 as a 24 seven champion entering the Royal Rumble with the crowd, you know, and an audience present, it is going to be electrifying. And, you know, there's been, it's, it's different how they did it when they had mentioned um, the previous legends coming back this year. And it has been really exciting because I haven't seen them in quite some time. And, um, you know, with Summer Ray coming back, Summer and I, when I began, Summer was on the main roster. And her and I were like two peas in a pod. We would drive together. And just like anyone, anything, you know, you leave one thing, you try and go and find your other path. And she did just that. But we would keep in contact here and there. And then the moment I found out she was entering the Royal Rumble, I texted her. I was like, oh, my God, it's summertime. You know, I can't wait for her to come back. Mickey James, to see that she's been dominating in other areas of wrestling, coming back into the WWE ring is phenomenal. I've tagged with, you know, Mickey quite some time. She's commentated on a lot of my matches. Um, it's truly, truly amazing to be a part of it. But again, I have to work double duty. It's not only getting thrown over the yeah. top. I got to make sure that. I'm not pinned. Yes, exactly. So Last that's year, Alicia be... Fox on our truth. It happened. Exactly. Exactly. So you just never know. You know, obviously, I have a strategy. Um, I want to be the last woman standing. Also, I definitely want to have this by my side. Um, so if I walk out with this by my side, I'm going to be extremely, extremely happy and proud of myself 
because I try and be a champion 24 seven. I try mm-hmm. and live my life every single day as a champion. And this doesn't only relate to me, it relates to all the fans out there supporting me that we all, we all are champions every single day. The stakes are certainly higher. Like you said, like last year, you made quite the entrance. You were off, you know, off the top rope, double drop kicks. You wiped out the whole field. So you knew how to make an instant impact. You knew what the stakes are, like you've just mentioned. There's a lot on the line. you got to protect that title. Um, I yes. mean, the legends, that are re- the legends that are returning, um, you know, I, I certainly pop for seeing Summer Rae back. And of course, Mickey um, being Impact Knockouts champion. You know, I'd love to see you two face to face, belt in hand. Holding same, like, it, right? Some... Hey, yeah, look, right. this is Come it. Come and get it. <laughs> Come and get it. So champions exactly. all over the place. Like you said, um, the stakes are going to be higher because there are an incredible amount of legends that are coming back. Um, you know, the, the Bellas, we've got Michelle McCool, we've had Lita's coming back. Um, for yourself, when we hear that clock count down from 10 to zero and say you were the only person stood in that ring, who would you love to face and see coming down that ramp towards you? Honestly, Charlotte Flair. I feel as though Charlotte and our business is not done yet. Um, you know, I started my career with Charlotte tagging, being her protege, her bossing me around, you know, me taking demands from her and then just kind of up and leaving me and then, you know, degrading me and belittling me. Trust me, I took that to heart and I tried to improve on every aspect of a person as I could, as far as improving in the ring, um, you know, always watching over my shoulder, never taking things lightly. So I feel like I have something to prove and be like, look, you've done all this to me before. Now I can stand face to face to you and say, you know, I'm, I can do this. Like you've motivated me. I haven't got, you know, a chance to show you what I'm capable of. And I definitely would absolutely love to stand face to face with her and show you that I'm, I'm possible of, of doing anything. And also not only being the 24 seven champion, but going after her for, for her title as well. Hey, double champ. I look much respect to what Becky Lynch is doing, but when I, when I took stock of the championship picture for myself as well, there would be nothing better than seeing Dana Brooke, Charlotte Flair, Russell Mania, because, you know, look, we love champion versus champion. Um, and of course, like you, speaking of champions, you embody what it is to be a champion in WWE, because I think what's been really great for the WWE universe to see, and I'm sure your colleagues and even like Beth Phoenix showing some love recently, um, you represent the WWE 24-7 championship with so much pride. Um, and, you know, we, we've seen, you know, it, it's very much a part of the E part of WWE, the entertainment, but it's something that you have personally, it seems, taken upon yourself to really, I don't know, bring another level to this championship. Just tell me about how much you have put into representing this championship. Before I had this title, I always told myself, I mean, even growing up, I was a gymnast for 18 years. You know, I would always manifest things and self-motivate and, you know, I would do affirmations every single day. And I'd always tell myself, I am a champion. I am a champion. I am a champion. Even in gymnastics, like I am a champion. I am winning. Um, and fitness and bodybuilding, you know, I was always in competition with other people too. And you don't know what you go through to finally get that 24 hour look, standing on stage, competing against all of the women around the world. Everybody's a champion at the end of the day, because you don't know what people are going through. Right. You know, I've had many ups and downs in my careers, a lot of tragedies that I've had to overcome and, um, obstacles even in my career. And. I've lived my life every single day, even without this title saying I am a champion 24 seven. I wake up in the morning, I go to the gym, I eat, I train. I am constantly thinking about wrestling. I'm trying to go to a ring to improve my skills. And you don't see that behind closed doors, mm-hmm. right? You, you don't see what anyone's going through. So when I actually won this title, it just, it felt like it wasn't only a title, but this was personal, right? It was like, not saying that, you know, any, the women's, you know, raw championship title would have been amazing. The, the smack up, but this is such a good starting point for me because it's proving that us women, uh, you know, another one, no other woman has held it as long as I have, but that's because of something. I am a champion every single day and everybody in the WWE motivates me to be a champion every single day because I try and relay the message the moment you wake up, you have 24 hours in a day to live your life. You never know what's going to be thrown in your path. 
it's not going to go, you know, um, as well as you would hope it would go. There's always little obstacles that come in your path and you overcome it. And you put your head down at night and you're like, wow, I did this. I overcame X, Y, and Z and I did it. I'm a champion. And I want every single person out there to know that you're just like me. You know, we don't ever, we don't go and talk about every single day, what we've been through, how we're trying to overcome things, how we're trying to improve on things. You just do it. And that's exactly what I did is I just did it. I went and capitalized on an opportunity and I I overcame it. And here I am standing as a 24 seven champion. I'm not going to lie to you. It is hard because (laughs) it's the only title that is, you can defend any place, any time. So it's like taking on another obligation because I'm like constantly like this. I'm in the gym, you know, my title. I take this everywhere with me. You know, I take this in the car to the gym. You know, it's next to me at all times because I look at it and it just it remotivates me. And it's like, wow, you know, you have to kind of keep going. But at the same point in time, you have to be careful. Like, for example, our truth and I have been super close throughout my whole career. Right. So I'm kind of like, why are you talking to me? Like, are you, you know, are you trying <laughs> to get this? You know, mm. You're very suspicious. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's definitely um, an amazing opportunity to hold this, but it's, it's like double duty all the time. My head's on a swivel. Hey, look, on the 29th of Jan, 30th for us Brits, WWE Network, St. Louis, Missouri, we are going to be tuned in, locked in. Final question for me, Dana Brooke ideal number to enter in what would you like 24 or 7 <laughs> love i love that 24, you know 24 might be a good number because it's towards the end and i definitely I know like i can i can last hey, that long dana brooke final four i want to see it i'm going to manifest it you're going to manifest it and we are super excited dana thank you so much 24 7 champion spending your time with us and we are going to be tuned in thank you so much